Let's look at hydrostatic loads. Hydrostatic loads refer to the loads created by motionless fluids. These are common in civil, geological, and environmental engineering, and they merit special attention. Consider a diver who is at a depth H and whose back has dimensions L by W. The weight of the water in the column above the diver is the mass density of the water times the acceleration due to gravity times the volume of the water, or rho times g times L times W times H. For clarification, the smaller W refers to the weight of the water, while the uppercase W refers to the width of the volume. The pressure acting on the diver's back is the weight or force of the water divided by the area of their back. Using what we know from the previous slide, we can substitute equivalent terms for both the numerator and the denominator. We can substitute W with rho times G times L times W times H and substitute area for L times W. When we cancel out L times W in both the numerator and the denominator, we are left with pressure equals rho GH. This formula tells us that the pressure P in a static fluid increases only with depth. In other words, a higher H value will result in a higher pressure. Rho is the mass density of the fluid in mass per unit volume, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and H is the depth below the surface of the fluid. Note that in fluids, pressure acts equally in all directions. Pressure can also be written in terms of gamma, which is the weight density of the fluid, and then gamma can be related back to the mass density, rho, by the equation gamma equals rho times g. In terms of gamma, the pressure is given by P equals gamma times H. For freshwater, rho is 1 kilograms per liter, or 1,000 kilograms per meter cube, and gamma is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cube. So at a depth of 3 meters, if we were to apply the equations from above, we will get the pressure of water to be 29.43 kilonewtons per meter square, or 29.43 kilopascals. Here we have a little mechanics activity that you can do from home, and this will help you in observing water pressure at different depths. For this activity, you will need an empty plastic cup or bottle, and you're going to poke two holes along the same side at different heights. One will be closer to the top and the other one closer to the bottom. You'll cover both holes with tape and fill the container with water. And over a sink, remove the tape and observe as the water spews out both holes. Pause here and take your time in thinking about the following questions. What do you notice about the water pouring out from each hole? And what does this tell you about water pressure occurring at different depths? For those of you who are unable to do this activity at home, here's a little clip to show what it would look like. From this activity, you would have noticed that the water pouring out of the hole closer to the top was a lot weaker than the water coming out of the hole at the bottom. This tells us that water pressure increases as the depth increases. The purpose of the last activity was to demonstrate how water pressure changes as depth increases. This can be depicted using a graph as seen on this slide. The two graphs are just plots of pressure versus depth. The second graph was inverted to show a better visualization of pressure increasing as you go deeper into water. Note that there is a linear relationship between pressure and depth given that the formula for pressure is gamma times H. And again, the deeper you go, the higher the pressure. Now let's dive into an example about a boat testing pool. The question states, calculate the pressure and loads on the windows associated with the boat testing pool shown below. As you can see, there are three windows in this question. The first one is at the bottom of the pool at a depth of two meters. The second one is located under the aluminum boat at a depth of 0.4 meters. And the last one is on the side of the pool, and we are told that it is a one meter tall window. Let's start off with the horizontal window at the bottom of the pool, which is one meter by one meter into the page. The pressure is gamma times H, which is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cube 
times the two meter depth of the pool. This gives us a pressure of 19.6 kilopascals. The total force acting on the bottom window due to pressure is equal to the volume of the box. Here I am just drawing a 3D visualization of this box to show the total force that is being exerted on the bottom window. Force will be equal to pressure times the area of the window, which is 19.6 kilonewtons per meter square times the one meter by one meter area. This gives us a force of 19.6 kilonewtons. Next, we will take a look at the window at the bottom of the aluminum boat, which is one meter by two meters. We can apply the same equations as last time to solve for pressure and the total force. This gives us a pressure of 3.9 kilopascals and a force of 7.8 kilonewtons. Notice that the pressure this time acts upwards, but we still consider its depth or distance from the free surface of the water in our equation. Finally, we'll examine the vertical window at the side of the pool, which is one meter tall by two meters wide. We find that at a depth of one meter, the pressure is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter square. The force exerted on the side of the window can be calculated by multiplying the area of the pressure triangle by the width of the window. And again, I'm drawing a triangular prism just to show the volume of this pressure prism. Remember that pressure acts linearly. From the equations, we get an area of 4.9 kilonewtons per meter for the pressure triangle and a force of 9.8 kilonewtons. On this last slide, we have a diagram that shows what we calculated in the previous slide, as well as the location of the resultant force on the prism.